All right. Hey, y'all. Um, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about simplifying variable expressions by doing something called combining like terms. Um, this is going to make our variable expressions much more manageable. So first, imagine that I gave you this problem. Evaluate this for x equals 6. And you're looking at like every single x here. I have to change to a 6. So I've got to write 6 plus 2 times 6 plus 3 times 6 plus 4 times 6. Oh my god, this is going to take me forever. This is so annoying. OK, there's got to be a better way. Well, there is. The better way is before we substitute in the value of 6. Let's see if we can simplify this problem. Well, notice this. x is just x. That's just that, that's 1x right there, right? That's 1x. And then there's 2 times x. Well, that just means two more x's. So together, these could be 3x's. And then, of course, if I add these 3x's with these 3x's, I could get six x's and oh you know what i could do the exact same thing over here i could have six x's over here and six x's over here oh and then these four with these six would make 10 x oh and these four with these six would make 10 x and then we have well we have the five so we would have 10 x and 5 x and 10 x how many x's is that that's 25 x's well that's much easier isn't it so then i just substitute 25 times six, and at least this is a simpler problem, right? Would you guys give me credit for that? So 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150. 150 is the correct answer here. And it's all because we simplified before we substituted in the value of six. All right, so before we get more into the technique, here's some vocabulary. So this is an expression, you guys know that. Uh, it's a combination of numbers and variables and operations. It has five of these things called terms. 2x is a term, 7 is a term, 10x is a term, 4 is a term, x is a term. A term just means a number or a variable or a product of them, like a number times a variable. So there's five terms in this problem. Um, a coefficient is another piece of vocab. So the coefficient, there are three coefficients in this problem. The coefficient is the number in a term that multiplies with a variable. Um, there's a coefficient here, two, because it's two times x. There's a coefficient here of 10. And there's a coefficient here. So this is very important to remember. A variable by itself, like x in this case, has a coefficient of one. Again, I'll say a variable by itself has a coefficient of one. And the last piece of vocab is the constants. These are terms with no variables. There's two constants. Uh, seven is a constant and four is a constant. Why do we call them constants? Because they don't change. They remain the same. They're just constantly seven or constantly four. So if you imagine, if I went back and I, ch and I plugged in like the number 10 for x, well, 2x would become 20, and 10x would become 100, and x would become 10, but 7 would just stay 7, 4 would just stay 4. They would stay constant. If I changed the value of x to a billion, it would be 2 billion plus 7, right? Like the 7 is constant. So those are the constants. Um, the multipliers, the numbers multiplying with the variables are called coefficients. And of course, there are five terms here. Okay, so let's talk about how we combine like combine like terms. So what do I mean by like terms? Like terms are terms that include the same variable raised to the same power. So in this problem, the terms that are like each other are uh, first 2x, 10x, and x, right? We're adding 2x plus 10x plus x. Are we allowed to rearrange the order here and have 2x plus 10x plus x all together? Absolutely, because of the commutative property, right? So this would be 2x's plus 10x's is 12x's plus another x is 13x. And then we would see, oh, we're adding seven and we're adding four. So we can combine those as well, right? Rearranging with the commutative property plus seven plus four. Oops, that is my alarm is 11, 13x 
plus 11. So this is combining like terms, right? The X terms go together, the constants go together. Why can't we combine these together? Well, why can't we go any further, right? And do 13 plus 11? Well, because that's not 13, that's 13 X's. And we don't know what X means. We don't know if it's 10 or 17 or 100 or who knows. We just know we have 13 of them. And then we just have the number 11 adding in. And so we can't really combine them. It's like, um, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not possible. So uh, let's do a couple more quick examples here. All right, so here we have 3A plus A, that's going to be 4A. We have uh, 5B and 2B, that's gonna be 7B. And we have adding six and adding 11, that's going to be adding 17. You'll notice we usually put the variable terms first and the constants at the end of the problem. So the final answer here would be 4A plus 7B plus 17. Let's look at one more example. All right, okay, this one's interesting. Notice that we have X squared in one of these terms, actually in two of these terms. So let's imagine for a second that X was the value 10. Well, then what would X squared be? It would be 10 squared, right? What is 10 squared? 10 squared is 100, okay? So this would be 500, because it'd be five groups of 100, and this would be another 100, and so they would combine to equal 600, right? But would this be another 200? Well, no, because it's just two x's, it's just two 10s. So it doesn't really combine with the x squareds. So we cannot combine variables that have different exponents. They have to have the same exponent in order to be like terms. So um, again, we have 5x squared plus x squared, that's gonna be 6x squared. 2x doesn't really have anything to combine with, so we just bring it down. We write plus 2x, and then we have uh, plus 10 and plus 9. That's going to be plus 19, and that's how we do it. All right, thank you all very much, and good luck.